for the biology units. Okay, uh, remember that biology is going to work differently in terms of how you study for it than how you would study for chem or physics. Okay, biology is very much have your knowledge all in place and organized and then be able to apply it to a practical situation. Okay, that's what the, the biology um, final exam questions are going to be about. Certainly, yes, there's going to be some recall stuff like, you know, uh, a diagram of a cell. All right, you need to remember what the parts of the cell are and what they do because there will definitely be a cell diagram on the on the final exam, okay? Uh, but then you're gonna need to remember other things and be able to apply them, like um, a lot of stuff to do with transport, with cellular transport, osmosis, diffusion, active transport, okay? Um, again, just like on your unit exam, I give you a practical situation. You have to decide which cellular transport method is gonna be there, okay? How is it going to work, okay? All of that kind of stuff, so show me hey, I know it's this stuff, I'm going to explain to you that I know how osmosis works, and then I'm going to tell you how it will fit with this situation. Okay, so you demonstrate your knowledge, then you demonstrate your understanding and application. All right, that's the kind of questions you're going to get for biology. So make sure that you're studying in a way that will get you those types of um, application skills and that type of knowledge. Everyone kind of follow? So that means reading over your notes, okay, making cue cards, thinking up situations where these concepts would apply would apply, okay, things like that. All right, first part of the biology unit, we talked about the cell theory, okay? Um, so certainly there will be some multiple choice about the cell theory, okay? There were really only three people to remember. I don't even remember if I put in a multiple choice question with anybody's name in it, okay? Um, it's not ringing a bell for me. So I would say names are probably not all that important, um, but certainly the points of the cell theory are. Um, and remember that on our unit exam, we had a number of opportunities in the written response to talk about the role of cells and how they carry out the basic functions of the organism, okay, how that kind of applied to diffusion and uh, cell transport and things like that, okay, so make sure you know the cell theory and how it can apply in certain situations. If you can work it into an answer somewhere where it makes sense, that's probably good, okay. So cell theory, first thing we talked about. Okay, then the next thing, we talked about modes of nutrition. Okay, so modes of nutrition were the photoautotrophs, okay, so organisms that can make their own food using uh, photosynthesis, light, carbon dioxide, and water. Um, and then we had the chemoheterotrophs, that's the organisms that have to consume other organisms for their organic material and then break them down chemically. Okay, uh, the big thing here, guys, is that for the modes of nutrition, what are the cellular differences between a photoautotroph and a chemoheterotroph? Okay, we're looking at cellular differences like having chloroplasts or not, having lysosomes or not, okay, uh, being flexible or, or having a cell wall or using a water vacuole and, and things like that. Okay, the, the different modes of nutrition cause differences in the, in the way the cells are structured and the way the cells work. Okay, obviously there are still some processes and structures in common as well, okay, but that will be kind of the focus of the modes of nutrition, and that's going to be pretty much all multiple choice, okay, so you just got to be able to recognize it, okay, read it, recognize it, that kind of thing, okay, questions on modes of nutrition? All right, cell diagrams, label, give the function, it's in the multiple choice this time, it's not in the written response, but there's definitely a cell diagram on your final exam. Okay, so make sure you go over yours. Okay, lesson five is the most important lesson in the biology unit, okay? It has the most information that gets applied to other places in it, right? And that was where we talked about how cells function and how they transport materials, okay? The big three are really important, again, that is diffusion, osmosis, and active transport, okay? Those are our big three, okay? There will be application type questions on the final exam that will involve those three methods of cell transport, Okay, some in the multiple choice, but more of it being in the written. Okay, 
Okay, so we have to remember how diffusion works, right? Diffusion is that passive transport of material down the concentration gradient, doesn't require any energy, okay? But it's slow and doesn't work good over long distances. Okay? We have to remember that osmosis is the passive transport of water across a membrane, okay? Water only across a membrane in order to balance salt concentrations. Okay, what that means is that if there's differences in salt concentrations on either side of a membrane, water is moving across. Uh, and then we have to remember uh, that active transport uses energy to actively pump small materials through or across the membrane. It does not transport large molecules, okay, like a chunk of food is not being moved by active transport, okay, that's engulfed, okay, that's different. Active transport is a pumping, it doesn't really change the shape of the entire membrane, just those carrier proteins that can open and close. Right? I think a few people got that confused with phagocytosis on the unit exam. Phagocytosis is the whole membrane engulfs something. That's different. Okay? We need to remember the big three. Okay? Application type questions on those three topics. Okay? Um, and then obviously the cell function, we went over in lesson five what every organelle uh, in the cell does. Okay? So that'll be important for number three here as well. Okay, questions on cell function and transport? Okay, uh, so cell size and transport, okay, the cube activity, right? We spent we spent a day doing this activity to prove, okay, that surface area and volume, okay, have some effect on how diffusion can work. And so cell size is kind of limited by the fact that cells use diffusion internally to transport materials. If they get too big, diffusion will not get things where they need to go quickly enough and the cell will die. Okay, uh, that is definitely a concept that will be covered on the final exam in the written response. Okay, so make sure you go over that concept. Okay, remember that it has to do with diffusion, surface area, okay, and volume. On your unit exam, that was the question about the enterprise being attacked by the giant amoeba. Okay, so we need to make sure that we understand how that stuff works. Okay. All right. Number six, okay, multicellularity. Okay, we talked about how being multicellular allowed organisms to overcome the surface area to volume problem. They could get very big, but still have cells that were very small where diffusion would work effectively. Okay, um, remember that to be a truly multicellular organism, you have to be specialized. Okay, that is, okay, that your cells are not all the same. You have some cells that do this job, some cells that do this job. Those cells look different, okay, because they are specialized. They're dividing the labor up, okay. Um, that's the mark of a true multicellular organism, okay, and all multicellular organisms are eukaryotic, okay. That means that their cells have compartmentalization, different organelles, all of that kind of stuff, okay. That all goes together, okay. We need to make sure we understand that. There's a fair amount of multiple choice stuff, about multicellularity, okay, specialization, compartmentalization, right, on that. Okay, and then we went into, as an example, our example of the um, multicellular organism was plants, okay, and we used the layers of the leaf as an example of a eukaryotic organism that had specialization. We saw that there were different layers in the leaf, that the palisade layer, okay, those cells were shaped like, you know, columns. They had lots of chloroplasts because their main job was to carry out photosynthesis. Meanwhile, the layer underneath, the cells were very irregular. They still had lots of chloroplasts, but their shape made it so that there were spaces in between where water, carbon dioxide, and oxygen could be exchanged and held, okay? Uh, and then we looked at the stomates, okay? The stomates were made up of guard cells, which are specialized cells that can change their shape and open and close the stomate, allowing water to evaporate, carbon dioxide and oxygen to be exchanged, okay? There were so many examples of specialization within the layer of the leaf, okay, that we looked at. That's the one you definitely need to be going on, okay? If there's a question in the written response about specialization, that's what you want to talk about is the layers of the leaf because that's the example that we used okay, in class, all right? Uh, we also talked about roots, leaves, and stems, okay? So the different parts of the plant, that's going to be more like multiple choice kind of stuff. What's their role? What do they do? Okay, things like that. 
And so, like I say, I've got those two topics there, okay, um, kind of put in the same rectangle because they are so tied together, right? If you're talking about one, you should be talking about the other, right? If you're talking about multicellularity and specialization, use the layers of the leaf to explain it. Okay, and then we had plant transport. Okay, so plant transport kind of went back to uh, osmosis again because it was osmotic pressure that was causing the pulling force that moves water up. Okay, it was also the polar nature of water, those hydrogen bonds between water molecules that kept them from falling back down. Okay, that allowed a plant to move water from the roots to the leaves. Okay, you got to remember the phloem and the xylem. Okay, the xylem transports the water, it's the tubes inside in the center, and the phloem is the living tissue okay, near the outside that carries the sugary sap that's containing the sugar made by the leaves, okay, um, things like that. So definitely know how plant transport works and make sure that when you're talking about plant transport in the written response that you include things like osmotic pressure, Okay, and the polar nature of water. Okay, those are the things that really need to be explained when you are talking about how a plant moves water from its roots to its leaves. Okay, because we did a lab on that. Remember, we cut the roots off of those plants, okay, and they still were able to transport water even though all they had was basically the leaf and a short piece of stem. Okay, so we know that that pulling force originates in the leaf. We know it's osmotic pulling force, okay, things of that nature. Oh, there it was, osmotic pressure. Okay, um, then for the next one here, okay, plant growth and development. All right, we had a lesson on plant growth and development where we talked about, um, you know, the different tropisms. Okay, we talked about phototropism, which is growth towards light. We talked about uh, geotropism, which is growth in response to gravity or growing away from the earth. Okay, and we talked about thigmotropism, which is when a plant can use something else to support itself, growing around something, grabbing onto it. Okay, uh, things like that. We talked about the different plant hormones. Okay, we had to because in order for a tropism to occur, what had to happen in the plant? Right, elongation of cells, but only on one side. Okay, which hormone was responsible for making those cells get longer? Auxins, right. Okay, these are the kinds of things that we need to remember. I'm glad some of us do, do remember that. That's good. Okay, those are the kinds of things you're going to need to explain, okay, or that might pop up in the multiple choice, okay, um, about plant growth and development. So make sure you know the hormones, okay, make sure you know how tropisms work, okay. Um, there might be something you know, in there on your unit exam. You had a, a question where there were two pictures. One was of a plant, uh, like a tree in the winter, and the other was of a tree in the desert. Okay, they were both dormant. And the question was asking you which hormone would be responsible for this and how does it do it? Okay, and the answer was abscisic acid was the hormone that was responsible. And abscisic acid causes dormancy by interrupting the production of chlorophyll. Okay. When there's no chlorophyll produced, then no photosynthesis goes on, no water gets transported, and the plant goes dormant. Okay, um, so there was kind of that explanation that needed to be there. Okay, so make sure that you can uh, do that. So there's a fair amount of multiple choice stuff about the hormones themselves, kind of what they do, recall kind of stuff. Okay, and then um, obviously like tropisms, okay, and things like that. Okay, remember that's differential growth, okay, differential rate of growth. Um, the different uh, tropisms here, photo, geo, and thigmo, okay, that could end up possibly as a written response item, okay, but most of that stuff is going to be multiple choice. Okay, and I think I told you this yesterday, right, there's 15 written response, and there's 87 marks in the written, okay, now, I know you're, you're I saw a bunch of you balk at that, okay, guys, there's lots of questions that have, like, a lot of marks for them okay like if we're looking at like uh like the mole equation question like it's four marks for each one of them all right so suddenly you got eight marks right away okay and it's just one topic okay um if you're doing like a physics question like a law of conservation of energy question with a roller coaster that could be six to eight marks it doesn't take long to get to 87 marks you don't need a lot of stuff there okay um so that's what that'll be out of okay um also size estimation Okay, make sure that you can do that. 
okay? in case I put a picture on there and say you're looking at this under the high power lens where the field of view is 400 micrometers how big is this uh, object okay and I would say like this object here would probably be somewhere between 150 and 200 micrometers right just size estimation kind of stuff okay make sure that you can also do that all right that's what there is from biology okay key to biology read over your notes okay think up situations where that stuff applies okay make sure that you know it well enough that you can recognize it in a multiple choice question or okay, uh, apply it in a written response question all right questions from you guys for biology stuff Okay, yeah, the smaller three, uh, phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated, um, if they are on there at all, it would be a multiple choice question. So I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time on it. Yeah, it's definitely not something worth multiple marks. Okay, anything else? Okay. <laughs>